So I thought I need to turn the camera on for this. First of all, uh, I got a Sigma by Martin, it's called, um, and I actually owned one of these guitars many, many years ago. I owned a 12-string Sigma by Martin. Uh, it was their, it was their uh, import line to compete with other uh, import model guitars of companies that were copying their guitars. So Martin copied their guitars and uh, this one was made in Indonesia. I've also heard they were made in Korea. Um, but there were a lot of uh, Japanese uh, import guitars. Actually a lot of the Japanese import guitars uh, have become very good. They, were, uh, they weren't bad, but they're even better now. So long story short, this started in about 1970. I can't make any sense out of the dates on, uh, on this guitar, so I have no idea. Apparently, Martin discontinued the company and the line in 2007, but uh, a German company bought the name and they're currently having models, Sigma models built in China. Now, I doubt if they say Sigma by Martin on them um, post-2007. So, this guitar came in because they had it in a shop in, uh, in Oregon. That's Oregon to people that live in California. All right, uh, let me see if you can see this. There is a an indentation right here, pretty serious indentation. Um, they had it in the shop to have a pickup put in it, and apparently uh, they noticed that this was really bent in here, and there's an actual, I mean, it's the finish and the the wood is loose here. It's uh, it's It's basically, separated in here to some degree. I haven't been in it yet, so I don't know if it's separated on the top, if the sides are separated, or how, how much damage there is. Um, it, I don't know if I'll be able to get that lined up in the guitar, in the, in the camera. But uh, what's another thing that's interesting, let me move some stuff, is that down the, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see down the side edge of this enough, but it actually, it's flattened the binding out right in here as well. Uh, let me see. I'm not seeing it in my monitor, but I can't see a lot in my monitor. So you might have to take my word for that. But it's uh, it's flattened. Not only is it concaved here, it's actually flattened the binding into, uh, compressed the binding. Now the wood, the body wood hasn't moved any. And this, you know, all the way, even any of the purfling has moved. But this binding here has been compressed. And I don't know if, if there was a single impact that did that or if this thing was sitting in a closet with weight on it or, or what, what. What caused this? I'm going to have to get inside to find out. But that's not even why I turned the camera on. Actually, by the way, I, uh, this thing was down a step in tuning. When it came in, I wanted to tune it up to pitch and see what it sounded like and see how the neck was and what was going on with the geometry of the thing. It's actually set up really good. Uh, there's uh, like 10 to 12 thousandths of relief in the neck. Um, I've got 5 64ths of uh, string height at the 12th fret on the fatty, 4 64ths on the, on the high E. And uh, the the action at the first fret, the string height over the first fret was really nice. So all in all, it it's uh sold up pretty well. I I don't know how this stuff on the on the butt end happened. So but anyway, I don't know if I ever finished my thought. I took it to Oregon, the company that looked at it, music store in Oregon that looked at it said they, uh you know they did pickups but they they weren't set up to do uh, any kind of this type of repair, woodwork, regluing the tail block. Uh, when I first heard about the guitar, it was, yeah, they said the tail block was loose. Well, that's a whole lot different than what I've got here. So as I was tightening the strings, I know I'm changing stories a lot. I hope you can keep up. 
as I was, that was a joke, as I was tightening the strings, the E and the B and the G were a bit lower than just a step down. They were at least a couple steps down. As I tightened those strings, I was getting a creaking sound and I thought, that's strange. And uh, I almost stopped and put the camera on right then, but I'm tightening the strings up. I'm getting a creak and a creak. I'm thinking like, Jesus, this thing is just going to blow up on me when I get it up to tension. And so as I was tightening the strings and I was getting this creaking, I went, came over here and I, I pressed on the pick guard as I was tightening. And I got the little, that's the noise it was making. I was just able to duplicate it as I was tightening the strings. I was going like, oh no. Anyway, so this is it. I mean, I'm going to dust this off. Right here. Okay, so can you see? I don't know if you can. Can you see the deflection in the pick guard as I push that down? Now, the pick guard itself is not loose. And I don't know if there's a crack under the pick guard. It feels really, really depressed right here. I mean, I can really push that. Now, anywhere I push on the top, I get that squeak. Now, I'm assuming it's this X brace that is just unglued here. And there's an X brace here as well. I get, no, well, I get over here because I'm disturbing that. I get nothing over here. I don't have any kind of anything anywhere else. Now, I am going to bang on it and just see if I have a loose brace that way back in here. You see, I'm holding this. Okay, it feels a little spongy. I don't know. I'm not hearing anything rattling, but I don't like the way it sounds. Uh, I'm going to flip it over and test the, the back bracing as well. Uh, I can look in the back bracing and I don't see anything obvious. Basically, I don't see any obvious separations in the dust balls that are stuck in the corners between the back and the braces. Uh, I will show you this since I'm here. This, uh, when I tuned it up and I checked the intonation on it really quick, this thing was, um, if by memory, I think it had to be at least 10 cents sharp. I'd have to look back at my, my tuner gauge to be sure. It was either 5 cents or 10 cents, but it was all the way across. But this, there was a lot of slop in this bridge. So and it was, of course, pulled all the way forward because of, uh, because of that. So I will... Um, in an effort to, well, now I can't even pull the thing out of here. In, a, in an effort to get the thing to play, you know, intonate correctly, I'll, I'll make a, a new saddle for this thing that fits the groove. I am, uh, okay, yeah, I didn't think there was a pickup of any sort in here because there's, uh, there was a regular end pin in here that I just pulled out before I started this up. Let me see. And grab my handy dandy bridge saddle yanker riders. Oh, there's a uh, there's a shim down in here. You got a pointy thing. There we go. I hate those. Hmm. Oh, there's another shim down in there. I wish that. Wow. I'm definitely going to be making a new saddle because <laughs> look at my um, okay I'm going to stack these up measure them I have 110 thousandths of shim under the saddle. Okay. And I, I don't like shims. Wait a second. <laughs> oh. So. That's actually. I'm looking at the top of the guitar. That's why it's white. So they put that thing all the way through to the top. That's interesting. Sounds like an old bed frame. Yeah, without those shims, that thing goes just totally down there. And it still rocks, so 
It's definitely going to have to have a new saddle. There we go. Well, I'm going to look at this and I will leave the camera running and see what we can figure out. Here. This is quite. Uh, I mean, I've fixed a lot of loose braces, but I've never had one that just, oh, you know, reacted like that. I wanted to bang on the back braces while we're here. Move my little screwdriver. Okay. Buttons hidden. That sounds pretty. Sounds pretty tight. Um, where's my? I usually have a five thousandths feeler gauge sitting right here handy that I can use to check loose braces with. Well, as loose as this brace seems, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that it won't be a problem to get a, a gate of. Uh, 8,000 gauge under there. Huh? Hmm. Oh, maybe it's more of a problem than I thought. What the heck? Oh. Somebody's tried to glue this already. That's going to make it even more fun. see that I have all this dust and crud that just came off of there well I'll just look inside and see what I can find uh, that 8,000 wasn't going under there but that doesn't mean it's not loose where'd mine go okay Yep, so I will get, <laughs> it's definitely loose. It's, I can see at least a sixteenth of an inch gap at the end of the, the X brace where it's supposed to be. And I, I say supposed to on purpose because it's notched. <laughs> That's pretty silly. Let's see if I can take pictures of that and show you. We have these Places where the uh, the X brace and the transverse brace on top here were notched. Notched. Do we have, can you see quotation marks? They were notched into the kerf lining here. Uh, but they're cut there. So there's a big notch in the kerf where the brace is supposed to go. And then the braces are just cut short of the lining. And then also the braces don't line up with where the kerfing was notched so it looks like they were putting the thing together and the braces wouldn't lay down in the notches that were there so instead of re-notching uh, and gluing a replacement piece of curving in, into the place where they missed they just cut the brace short so because you know what we don't have time for this crap um okay They got the other ones in the notches, and they have some sort of a, looks like a white, white, uh, hot, um, what do you call that? Hot glue? Not hot, not, not like high glue. Like the hot glue gun glue? Yeah. I guess that's what you call it. You call it hot glue, but it's, geez, and they got back braces notched into the curfing and the back brace is a little over a quarter inch wide and the notch is a half inch wide. So they, they weren't taking any chances on getting these things notched in there. Well, <laughs> it didn't matter because when they missed, they just uh, didn't worry about it. Hmm. 
Well, interestingly enough, the tail block doesn't look like it's very wide. That, I'm not going to say it caused the problem, but it could certainly um, not hurt. It's also not touching the best I can tell. It's, it's, it's angled. It's not touching the top of the guitar all the way across the top of the block. It's angled. And so it's touching on the forward edge of the block, but it's got an angle going down. And it's way more of an angle than, say, what the block is pushed in, because I thought for a second maybe I'm seeing that. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe I'm seeing just a radius corner. I don't want to get too far ahead of this. And I mean, it's it's ugly. So I don't. But I don't want to say something's ugly that isn't really ugly. Well, I can't tell. I will uh, actually get back in there with my arm with the five thousand feeler gauge and see. What I can push in there and see if it's uh, loose or what's going on. Uh, I'll get. I'm using my camera right now for the. I mean my phone camera, for my monitor. So I will uh, stick it down in here and take pictures of the, of the loose brace. If this film ever gets to uh, the light of day, you will be able to see that. The uh, oh, I should have mentioned while I was looking at it. The uh, bridge plate is uh, plywood, which isn't a bad thing, and it's not chewed up at all, which is also not a bad thing. It looks like this leading edge might be a little loose, in which case I, I should probably try to get some, uh, some glue in there.